Welcome to District Pulse, the Georgetown Real Estate Alumni Association's recurring highlight of DC's most exciting news, projects, and developments. I'm Elizabeth Clipp, and I'll be discussing what's happening in real estate right now in the capital city. Let's begin with a topic that's been at the forefront of discussion for small developers, planners, architects, and homeowners alike, proposed changes in DC's R4 district. Now, it's not often that zoning matters make the headlines, but the changes under consideration are directly related to one of the city's hot-button topics, pop-ups. In historic neighborhoods of charming row homes, residents have begun to take notice of the pop-up trend. A pop-up is the addition of one or more stories on top of an existing row home, causing it to pop up above the rooftops of adjacent structures. Now, some of these pop-ups are tastefully done blending nearly seamlessly with the neighborhood while simultaneously adding valuable square footage in a city severely lacking in reasonably priced housing. But what happens when property owners put function over form, building upwards without consideration of their impact on otherwise charming blocks? Cited violations of the city's character often involve issues with cheap construction, modern materials, or architectural features that are incompatible with their historic neighborhood. In other cases, the pop-ups are conspicuous simply because their roof lines are geometrically inconsistent with neighboring structures. In the most egregious cases, both issues come into play. Now, as the daughter of a residential architect, I become truly sad at the thought of careless construction ruining DC's graceful row homes, many of which are over a century old. The adage is true, they just don't make them like they used to. But as a young middle-income district resident, I have lived the reality of our city's shortage of affordable housing. Many of these single-family row homes are being popped up to be converted into smaller, more affordable condos and apartments, so they can serve to provide additional housing options in DC's high-demand neighborhoods. In any case, the pop-up trend has caused sufficient unrest to catalyze a proposition that may partially restrict this kind of construction. Resident groups are the driving force behind proposed zoning changes for Residential District R4, shown here in pink, which applies to most of the U Street, Columbia Heights, Petworth, Noma, Capitol Hill, and H Street neighborhoods. Now what does zoning have to do with these pop-ups? Well, the current zoning operates as a license to pop, enabling developers or owners to add several stories by right. In the R4 district, Residential structures are permitted to be 40 feet tall. Three above ground stories are permitted, but mezzanine levels aren't considered stories, which means that buildings may have the exterior appearance of four above ground levels. So long as the property is not in a designated historic district, no special approvals are required for construction conforming to these zoning rules. Let's look at an example. This is a quiet block of charming two-story row homes from the early 20th century. Now let's say the brick house in the middle of the block was purchased by a small-scale developer. The property is zoned R4, so the developer decides to add a third level and a mezzanine. The home will be divided into two condo units and sold for a solid profit. Meanwhile, two young families can buy affordable homes in an up-and-coming neighborhood. Everyone wins, except perhaps the neighbors and the surrounding community who might experience lower property values and disruption of their quaint historic block. These kinds of concerns were the impetus behind the proposed zoning changes, which would reduce the allowable height from 40 feet to 35 feet. It would also reclassify mezzanines as stories and place limits on the conversion of single-family homes into condo or apartment buildings. Under these new zoning regulations, the developer in our example would only be able to add one full story to the building, resulting in a much more seamless aesthetic. The neighbors would certainly be pleased, but bear in mind, with a limited addition, the project's upside is far less. The developer might walk away from the lower returns, and our two young families couldn't afford the single-family row home. Our example has demonstrated one thing. There is no clear solution to these pesky pop-ups. The line between pragmatic growth and degradation of DC's character is certainly blurry. Might I suggest a citywide pop-up architectural review board? During the past month, the D.C. Office of Zoning has been carefully considering the proposed changes, 
recognizing the strong opinions from a divided public. We'll soon know whether the R4 row homes will continue rising to new heights or will be more grounded in their historic roots. Switching gears, let's discuss one of DC's most promising but simultaneously most discreet development opportunities. Earlier this month, an announcement was made that the Armed Forces Retirement Home will be seeking a development partner to monetize approximately 80 acres of largely unused land in the center of Washington. Now I say this opportunity is discreet because many Washingtonians aren't really aware of the AFRH, despite its sprawling 272-acre campus. After all, the community has been nestled behind stone and iron walls for over 160 years. It was established as an asylum for old and disabled veterans in 1851, but today has been recognized for providing unparalleled quality of life for veterans. So where have 80 unblemished assembled acres been hiding in this dense city? Turns out it was right under our noses, quietly settled among the neighborhoods we've been seeing rapidly gentrifying during the last decade. The AFRH has funded its operations with a private trust fund since inception, but it had recently become clear that more capital would be needed to maintain and grow the facility. In 2002 and 2010, Congress passed legislation that allowed the AFRH to leverage the value of its real estate, a rare benefit awarded to government facilities. Following this legislation, a master plan was constructed that left the development community salivating. It indicated that the AFRH would set aside 80 acres in the southeast corner of its property for a massive, mixed-use, private sector development. Just this month, the AFRH has announced that it will be formally issuing a request for proposals. The subject acreage is pristine, largely used as parkland for over a century. These rolling hills are some of the highest in the district, offering incredible views in all directions. All of this, and also surrounded by metro stops, medical facilities, universities, and population centers. The AFRH is looking for a development partner that can provide a significant infusion of funds, while simultaneously improving the dynamics of their community and honoring their historic characteristics. They are encouraging a town center style development, containing a combination of research and development, office, residential, hotel, and retail uses. They've recommended adaptive reuse of any existing buildings, highlighting the possibility of securing historic tax credits as the entire site is listed with the National Register of Historic Places. The project is only available as a long-term ground lease to the selected developer. Even so, it represents an incredible opportunity to develop 4.3 million square feet in the center of Northwest DC. That's about 34% larger than the wharf 72% larger than city center, and 95% larger than Capitol Crossing. We'll be watching to see which lucky development team will be bringing their vision to life while simultaneously honoring our veterans at the Armed Forces Retirement Home. For our last topic, let's take a look at an innovative development that continues to turn heads, especially now that a first phase has delivered this month. For the past few months, I imagine many of us have been stumbling out of the 930 Club and in the warm aftermath of a great concert, wondered what's going up across the street over there? Well, perhaps most of us just read about the development, but regardless of how we heard, the Atlantic plumbing buildings are the cause of much excitement, primarily because of their architectural uniqueness. The U Street and Shaw neighborhoods are known for their quirky style and thriving nightlife. Both areas are culturally rich and historically significant as the epicenter of African-American arts community throughout much of the 20th century. The development sits on dilapidated lots formerly belonging to the Atlantic Plumbing Supply Company. The Atlantic Plumbing development is noted to have drawn inspiration from the quirky and unconventional character of the surrounding neighborhood. The team of star architect Morris Ajmi took great care to preserve what they could of the existing structures, including the infamous chewing gum wall located outside of the 930 Club and the original Atlantic plumbing signage that will be incorporated into the new residential lobby. Each building has a distinct character derived from its primary structural features. The larger 310-unit building has a cord and steel exoskeleton 
that provides lateral bracing support while simultaneously achieving an astounding graphic facade. The smaller, 62-unit condo building that was delivered this month is constructed with aluminum factory sash windows arranged to create an overscaled running bond pattern. The condos are now for sale, advertising a top-of-the-line amenity package and unparalleled city views visible through massive windows, high ceilings, and particularly from the decked-out rooftop terrace. Of course, we've come to expect nothing but the best from the developer of this project, JBG. But the Atlantic Plumbing Project is truly going to have a compelling impact on the neighborhood, especially because of the retailers that will be accompanying the residential spaces. The street level will soon become home to retail shops encouraged by the community, multiple new restaurants from Star Chefs, and, most exciting, a new landmark theater location. Thanks for tuning in this February. Look for us next month as we continue to highlight DC's most exciting real estate projects and events.